Hello everyone, I am Karl Zielinski and today we are looking at how to bind to a C library from our Odin code. This means that we will make it so that we can use a C library from Odin. And this uses what is known as the Foreign Function Interface or FFI shortened. And the contents today is that we will first look at our tiny C library code, what it does, and then we will compile that C code into a library and I will do, be doing this on Windows and then I'll show you the Odin bindings, how things are set up so that Odin can understand what is inside this C library and how we can interface with it. And after that I'll show you how to use these Odin bindings from a tiny program. After that we will look at how to use a shared library or a DLL instead of a static library. And then at the end, we will look at how you can make the library import platform specific. So you include different library files on different platforms, such as Windows and Linux and stuff. Let's first look at our folder structure of this example. And by the way, this code is linked in the description. So in this folder here, binding to C, I have main.odin. Main.odin is the file that uses the library that I will show and we will look at that later when we looked at the library what that one does and then there's a folder called mylib and if we go into there then you have a mylib.c and mylib.odin mylib.c contains the original c library which we will soon compile into a library and then mylib.odin implements the sort of bindings that let us interface with that c library so we can pull mylib.c to the right pane here and mylib.odin to the left pane here. Let's start with looking at what mylib.c does and compile it to a library. In this file we have two C functions here, set callback and do stuff and these are the ones that we want to expose in our library so that you can call them from Odin. Set callback is a function that takes a single callback and the callback here is a function pointer. So in here we will feed an Odin function and the only thing this does is that it stores the callback in a global variable like this. And then we have the function do stuff. And do stuff takes a struct like this. Uh, this test struct up here contains an integer and a floating point number. And you will feed this uh, in this struct from the Odin side. And it adds one to the number and subtract one from the floating point number. It's just an example. You don't need to pay much attention to this part. This is just to fix the ordering of the messages because in C and Odin, how the console works is slightly different. So this forces all the messages out to the console when we run the program so that these are not printed after any printing I do in the Odin program. And then it checks if the callback is not null, which means that we have set the callback using this procedure. And then it runs the callback and feeds in the test structure because you see the callback takes a par one parameter, which is also the test structure. So essentially this thing will take a test structure, modify it a bit and then send it back using a callback. And then you can see if the C code did what you expected to the data in your struct. Let's now compile our C code so that our Odin code has something to interface with. I will first make a static library and then later we will look at how to make a dynamic library, meaning so that we also get a DLL file. So down here I have a command prompt that has access to the Visual Studio C compiler and I can compile mylib.c as an object file by writing cl mylib.c slash c. It's important that you add a slash c here because then it doesn't try to create an exe, it just compiles the object file without linking it. And then in order to turn this object file into a .lib file, which is the static library, we use lib mylib.obby. And now you see that there's an object file here, but more importantly, there is a .lib file here, which is our static library. Now let's look at the Odin code in mylib.odin here, which I already opened on the left side here. So this one does a couple of things and what this sets up is essentially the bindings for using this C library from Odin. So we can start with this stuff up here, foreign import mylib. So here you see 
within these curly braces, you see that it says mylib.lib. So this one is saying which library file to load. So it, it's referencing this file here, mylib.lib. So, so this is just telling where to find the actual compiled library. And the name here, mylib, will appear down here later. You can choose anything here for mylib. The fact that the package is called mylib and this one is called mylib has nothing to do with each other. But the name you use here is the one you will use later down here in order to specify which procedures that exists within your library. So that's all you need to do to, to sort of load in the library file. So let's look at this stuff down here. We are here saying which functions to expose from within the C library. So you see set callback is the same name as over here. And this set callback is a procedure that takes a single callback. It, it's the same thing as here really. You can kind of see that these are the same. And callback then in the Odin code is defined as a, it, this is just a type alias. Uh, so callback should be a procedure that takes a single test struct, which is the same thing as here really. And the C thing here means that this procedure must use C calling convention. And you see this C again here, this default calling convention equals C. You could also type like this everywhere and remove that. However, since so all of them in a binding like this often have the same calling convention, you can skip that and just say before it default calling convention equals C. So Odin code calls functions or procedures in a slightly different way than C. So this just says that we expect to call this procedure in a C way. One, one difference between them is, for example, that Odin passes along an implicit context parameter everywhere, which C doesn't. So if you just try to shove that context into a C procedure, then you would, uh, yeah, you, you would probably crash because you're feeding it more data than it expects. So anyway, set callback is just this procedure here. And you see this triple dash here. That's because in Odin, usually you would write a body of a procedure like this, but since the the sort of the code of the procedure is coming from C from the library, we don't want to do that. So the triple dash just means leave it uninitialized, uh, and it will sort of be fed in the uh, wherever it is in the C code instead. Then we have do stuff down here, which is a procedure also. I mean, it's the same as this really. You know, uh, it's just do stuff is a procedure that takes a test struct. Test struct is defined in the C code as a struct that has a number and a floating point number. Any struct or any type in your C code that you want to be able to reason about in your bindings, you must sort of re-declare in your Odin code. So here I have test struct is a struct. And in order to make your life easier when you're binding to C, there is a thing in the core collection called core colon C. So you see here that I can write C.int and C.float. These are good to use because these will always be the same size as the int type and float type in C. Because for example, in, if you did this on a 64-bit computer in Odin, this will be a 64-bit integer. But in C, this integer would actually be 32 bit. So this c.int and c.float will be of the correct size for interfacing with c. So you just write c. and whichever type name you wrote here. So let's now use our library bindings here. So if we go up one folder and then look what main does, we pull it into the right pane here. Main imports my lib folder. So it imports this folder here. And then we see that main runs set callback, it says mylib.set callback, and then it has a callback, and this, here's this procedure that is the callback that I will, uh, that will be run whenever do stuff later runs. And you see that I need to have the C on here in order to, to, to feed it in here, because it must match the signature of this thing, right? So it sets the callback to my callback, then it creates one of these test structures, and then it runs do stuff. I will talk a bit about this context stuff in a tiny bit, but let's first run the program and see that it works okay. So in this command prompt that I had, I can go to the parent directory and then just type odin run period. And here we see it says setting callback, doing stuff in the callback, test struct num8, and then something is floating point number, blah blah blah. So you see that number has increased by one and floating number has 
decreased by one. And if you look at what the C code does, that's sort of what you expect it to do. So it, you, it, you have fed in this thing and this thing has been modified by the C code and then the C code has run your callback, which you set up down here. And then it says in the callback and then it prints the struct like this. Let's talk a bit about this context stuff that's going on here now. So like I said, in C and Odin, you have different calling conventions. In Odin, there is an implicit context sent along everywhere. So if you mark a procedure as C, then that context cannot come along automatically for you. So you need to somehow get hold of it yourself. Because if this line didn't exist, then this this, this wouldn't compile because the fmt.println stuff requires the context to be there. It doesn't work otherwise. So there's kind of two different ways you can do this. I have done this here in the way that I have assigned when main starts the, the context to a global variable here. And then I set the context when, when this procedure starts to the global variable. The reason I do this is because then I can like here set up tracking allocator. You know, I, I, I can set up stuff in here and then set that context and then use the exact same context that maybe we can have my special tracking allocator and stuff or the, the allocator for tracking memory leaks and you know all that. However, another way to do this is that you can also skip this custom context global variable and then just inside here you can just write runtime.default context. You run this procedure. This is will give you a context that will look exactly like the default context that main has when it starts up. And if we again, if we save this and, and run it again, then, then it still works okay. But yeah, if you do any kind of special context setup in the beginning of main, then maybe you want to save that out somewhere so that your C procedures can use that. So let's now look at how to compile the C code as a DLL instead and sort of what you need to do to make that work properly. And there's essentially two things you need to do different. So if you go into mylib.c here, so in order for a C function to be exported so that it is visible in the DLL, you need something called this export thing here. So you need to add this decal spec DLL export in front of the C functions here. Many people make a macro that looks a bit nicer than this, but this is what it essentially needs to do. So that's your code changes you need to do. And now we just need to compile this as a DLL instead. And in order to do that, you go back into my, the mylib folder here and you write cl mylib.c and then you write slash ld and that will compile it as a DLL. So now we see here, if we go into this folder, that we have both a library file and a DLL file. And if I make this a bit bigger, you can see that. So if you look at these two, files here, you have a library file and a DLL file. You can see that the, D the library file is tiny and the DLL is a bit bigger. The lib file doesn't actually contain your code at all. All that is in the DLL. The lib mostly sort of tells the program to load the DLL and stuff like that. But yeah, so we don't need to change our bindings because the lib file is still the same. But if we now go up one folder and do odin run period, then you get a classic error. You couldn't find mylib.dll. So in order to get that to work, you can just take mylib.dll, go up to where the exe is here, paste it in, run it, and there it works. So now this exe is using this dll for the code for the C library. So as a final thing, let's look at how to make this foreign import things platform specific, because if you're on another operating system, then you probably have different library files that you need to put in here. Like if you're on Windows or Linux or Mac OS. So what you can do is in your mylib folder here, let's create a folder called Windows. And we will move the DLL and the lib file into there. I cut and paste. This exp and obi file are actually not important. I just leave the C file there. But now we have the DLL and the lib inside there. So then in the Odin bindings here, I can just write when Odin OS equals dot windows. And then I make some curly braces, some indentation there. And then since we move these files to a subfolder, we need to add that here as well. So we write windows slash mylib.lib. 
And if we save that and now go back to the command prompt, so if we now run the program again, odin run period, then we see that everything still works properly, but on Windows it is now only running this code. So what we can do now is now we can add in extra when blocks here for different platforms. So we can say else when odin os equals dot linux. And then we could copy this block here, but we could instead go into some Linux subfolder where we put our Linux files for the library. If you want additional good examples of how to make bindings, then you can go to your Odin compiler directory, go into vendor, and then, for example, go into the Raylib folder, and then pull in raylib.odin into your text editor. And then you can scroll down a bit here, and you can see that this one does all the when blocks here with the foreign import, but it does a lot more. So you can look at these things to sort of be inspired with how you can do stuff. And, and one interesting thing that here the Raylib does is that it uses a config flag to to toggle if you want the, the DLL version or the statically compiled version. So that's an interesting thing you can, you can do if you want to make it configurable which one to use. Okay, that's it for this video. The code that I showed in here is linked in the video description. Thanks a lot for watching and special thanks to all my patrons and YouTube members. If you want to support me and help me make more videos and blog posts and stuff, then you can also become a patron or a YouTube member. Thanks a lot. Happy programming and bye bye.